In case you're just joining us, we bought this boat for $100. We spent almost a year fixing her up, then we took on the Pacific Ocean as we cruised from California to Washington. For the next few weeks, we're exploring the pristine waters of British Columbia, Canada. Make sure to subscribe so you can join us on this all new adventure. Bacon, egg, cheese, ketchup on some good bread or croissant or bagel. Two eggs always. That's the only way. We left Vancouver this morning. Now we're headed back up north and we're going towards Desolation Sound. I don't know exactly where we're stopping today or for the next few days. We have a ton of points of interest that we just marked on the charts, a bunch of little pins. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring Desolation Sound and this whole area. We're so freaking excited. So we're underway, headed north. Not really sure where we're stopping tonight. I have one or two spots picked out and we'll see where we end up. Today's video is sponsored by Butcher Box. Stay tuned to find out how to take advantage of this month's smoking deal and free shipping. ButcherBox gives customers access to high quality meat at an affordable price and you never pay for shipping. So how does it work? You choose your box and delivery frequency to fit your family's needs. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at peak freshness and packed in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box. You enjoy high quality meat delivered to your door. If you have been with us for a while, you know we care a lot about our health and what we put into our bodies. If we are not catching our own food ourselves, we are always trying to find meat that is high quality and humanely raised. At ButcherBox, the beef is always 100% grass fed. This means the cows are free to roam the pastures their entire lives. The pork from ButcherBox is always crate free, the chicken is free range and organic, the seafood is wild caught, and no animals are ever given antibiotics or added hormones. Good times are often centered around good food, and we love sharing that with all of our favorite people, and that includes you! Click the link below to claim this month's limited offer plus free shipping. Thank you ButcherBox so much for sponsoring this video, thank you all so much for watching, we hope you enjoy it, and I hope we didn't make you too hungry! So check this out, right behind me over here, this tug is towing this huge train of just logs through the water. I know logging is still a really big industry up here, but this is wild to see. This is the first time we've seen this at all on the water. Crazy. Seems like they're all just bundled together and it's just the logs floating themselves. So we've seen a lot of logs and debris and big pieces of lumber like that floating in the water. And most of it I think is from the rivers, just a lot of forest around here and these things fall in the rivers and in the springtime when there's high river flow it just gets dumped down to these bigger bodies of water like the Strait of Georgia right behind us here. Sometimes you see like really nice round logs like long ones like these with perfectly drilled holes through them like this big and I bet you this is the kind of industry that it comes from. Maybe not directly off these floats when they're towing them but maybe on the shore side operation I don't know but once in a while you do see that what I think is exactly from this industry or maybe they're just like dock pilings or something that came loose I don't know I'm no expert beautiful out right now We're actually almost there. We cruised, I think the total distance today was like 50 miles or something. We had some wind pick up from astern, so it got a little rolly as we're going downwind and down these steep little chop that started to form. 
but we're getting protected now so the chop has gotten a lot smaller still got a little breeze from behind smooth 50 mile run we tied the tides perfectly we had an outgoing tide as we were leaving vancouver and as we started heading up north in the strait of georgia the tide just started to be flooding so we caught a bunch of that flood tide um, especially through a couple of the passes back there. Average at over eight knots, I think, on our way up here. And yeah, we're only a few miles away from our anchorage for the night. I decided we'll go to this spot called Harding Island. There's like a little marine park over there. It looks like a cool sheltered spot. Oh man, look at this house on the cliff over here. This is wild. So everybody always wants to know like all about fuel consumption and all of that with this boat. Basically, it's it's kind of nuts. It's our boat, it's our whole house right now. We just moved it 50 nautical miles at about eight knots each engine. We're running at about 1600 RPMs right now. At that speed, we're getting probably around a gallon and a half per hour of uh, run time. So let's see, about six hours and change. So let's just call it six hours of run time, gallon and a half each engine. Uh, so that's three gallons an hour times six hours. So that's about 18. So 18, maybe 20 gallons of diesel fuel to get 50 miles to move our whole house 50 miles. I don't know, it's pretty good. Really excited to be heading up towards Desolation Sound. We've only heard amazing things about this whole area, BC, Canada in general, and especially Desolation Sound and just being on the water. And we're super, super excited to explore. We saw our orcas, but hopefully we get to see some more. Sierra really would like to see like some bears on the on the coastline, which apparently is not uncommon. And of course, just all the other natural wildlife, the eagles and the birds and the seals and everything like that. So we're, we're so excited. And on top of that, we're really excited to get some of our own seafood again. We did a little bit of that with our friends Matt and Laura. Can't wait to get some oysters and some rockfish and hopefully some prawns. We bought a prawn trap back in Vancouver. So hopefully we get some prawns with that. Prawns are like big shrimp for those of you who don't know, so excited. Something else I have to show you guys. So if you've been following our channel, you know that we like to be very active. My favorite thing to do on the water to stay active besides like winging and foiling and surfing is paddling. Sierra's is as well. And that's especially fun when there is no waves or wind or whatever. So Sierra bought a stand up paddle, inflatable paddleboard online. We'll let you know how it does. And I bought, <laughs> a used surf ski here basically a really long skinny kayak i did the same thing when we were on adrenaline we were cruising through the caribbean and i was just dying to get paddling again and i bought a used surf ski from another cruiser and then down the line uh, when we got back and sold adrenaline i sold that but now i got another one so something to train with so when we anchor today hopefully i can drop the surf ski in the water and go explore go for a little paddle and get a good workout in so this is where we're going tonight right in here on Harding Island here. So I'm just turning in right now. All right, took a little bit, but we're all anchored up. There were stern tie markings on the chart. It described them as stern ties. Like usually there's like chain hanging out of the rock or something or like a big eye in the rock. But Sierra went and dragged the rope over. I maneuvered the boat back and there were no stern, there ended up being no stern tie ties over there. And then some signs on land that says private. So we figured, I don't know, maybe that's just old. Instead of doing a stern tie, we're just anchored in deeper water, not ideal, it's like 65 feet. We got the anchor to set nicely and we're home for the evening. Check out this spot. This apparently used to be like an old rock quarry up here is what I read. What a view. All right, I'm gonna go get a quick paddle in before it gets dark. Remember yesterday when we passed those huge rafts of logs being towed by a small little tugboat? Check it out. So we came across this big thing and it looks like the same sort of rafts of logs or whatever you want to call them not being towed currently they're just anchored to this rock up here and it looks like maybe they're in between being towed or just waiting to be picked up by a tug or something like that it's just wild to see them up close and how big it is and everything does one tug do all of this or is this multiple 
I don't know, because it's hard to tell how big, but one tug does a lot. This might be like two separate ones, I'm not sure. But look, there's a tug coming in right over there. So he might be coming in to grab grab one. A log island. But you guys can see on some of these, the holes that I was talking about, where we find, here's one, just a big hole in the log with like a ring coming through. And that's sometimes what we see on the beach here and there. But look how, look how many there are. Just huge. So I don't know if you guys can see, but it's right, cause it's right in the sun. But look, there's the tug coming back in and he's got like an empty raft, what it looks like a raft. All right, so we're gonna go get some oysters and hopefully try to find some mussels as well that we can uh, have for dinner. Shellfish in general, you wanna be really careful where you get them from. You don't wanna get them in like polluted waters cause they could have harmful bacteria in them that if you eat, obviously is not good for you, make you sick. And then there's stuff like paralytic shellfish poisoning and all sorts of stuff that could contaminate shellfish mostly because they're filter feeders. So we've been checking like religiously on one of the government websites that does a lot of the water quality testing and stuff like that. And just to make sure we're in an open area, just to be extra safe, we won't eat any of them raw. We'll just cook them all. And hopefully that prevents us from getting sick. And especially in the summer months too, when it's really warm, you get a lot more of like, uh, because of like harmful, is it mostly harmful algal blooms up here? Yeah, just more to it's warmer, there's more toxins grow, more bacteria grow bacteria grows, especially in like enclosed bays and stuff where there's not a lot of water flow and where it gets really, really warm. So just something we want to be careful of. Okay. Alright, there's a whole bunch of oysters all over these rocks over here. We've got some right here that are a little closer to the water. Oh yeah, those are all in the water still. So that's a good sign when they're like in the water still at low tide. That means they're mostly covered by water. They're not baking in the sun during like a midday high, uh, low tide. Oh yeah. Let's kind of sit it up on the rock. As long as the tube's not touching in the barnacles or anything, we're good. Look at all those oysters, huh? Look at, they're everywhere. And Eve especially over there, look at that. They're just covered. Oh, check out these starfish. The starfish around here are so cool. They're super purple. Look at all these oysters. This is insane. scattered in there as well. So I'm no professional oyster shucker, but I got my method down that works for me. That's what I do. There's this little like groove in the back of the oyster here. And there's usually a flat side of the shell and a flatter side of the shell and then like a scooped side of the shell. So I like to get this little oyster shucker tool into that little groove, push a little bit, get it in there, but not too hard. I don't want to slip and cut my hand even though I have a glove on. All right, get it in there and then you can just pry it sideways, just turn your knife sideways, bam, pops right open. And then I just keep going and just cut it off the shell on that side. This one's going slower than it should. Come on, just cut them off the shell there. And usually I try to keep them on the scoop side, but the scoop side, the spoon-like side broke. So now he's on the flat side. And then just make sure there's no shells in there and I just give them a little drain there and put them on the tray. Let's try again and see if we can go smoother this time. I try, I keep the flat side on top, I believe. And cut them off the other side, just so he's loose in there. These are good looking oysters. You guys live up here in BC. Let us know, like, do you actually eat them raw? Do you, 
Like, what's the actual deal up here? Because so the map we've been looking at to see, like, what where the closures are and where there's been biotoxins and stuff like that, it doesn't make sense to me. You would imagine it's in, tucked up in, like, small bays and stuff where the water doesn't move much, where it gets really warm and where there might be a lot of houses and boats and stuff where there's a lot of nutrients in the water. There's these big areas, like like these big open bodies of water, a lot of water flow like from the Strait of Georgia and stuff like that, that are just all closed. So if you guys are from BC, let us know like what the deal is. And then you, and then some of the open areas, like even where we are now, we're getting a little bit back in the bay, not really. We're still really close to those open bodies of water. But where we were with our friends, Matt and Laura was, way up a, a waterway and there's still a lot of water flow back there but it was still it seems so far away from these big open bodies of water look at this guy this cool looking oyster all right we got two big trays of oysters get out of there jenny hey we're gonna grill them up but we got to prepare our sauce for them first i'll show you what we're gonna whip up here today we're gonna grill them but we're also gonna add some smoke flavor to them so we got our little Grillaholic smoke box. And we're gonna add some wood chips to here. All right, so they're gonna soak in that water there. All right, we'll add a bunch of butter. So we'll add some gar garlic to this butter. Too hot, too hot. Delicious garlic. <laughs> Alright, so we got the wood chips in the little smoker box here. We'll get that going, get it nice and smoky first while we get the sauce on here. Make sure we get a little on all of them and then we'll go back and use it up. Probably using too much. Get out of here, Jetty. Oh my god, so if you guys could smell this, it already smells so good. Alright, and then Sierra cut up a little Parmesan cheese, so we'll, we'll throw some of that on here. That's going to be amazing. Alright, we got the smoker box going. It's smoking pretty good. So we got our oysters with our sauce on it. We got some corn on the cobble throw on there. And then we got some of these little mini sweet peppers that Sierra mixed up with some garlic and olive oil and stuff like that. And we'll throw that on the grill as well. How good do they look? Tasty. Are you alright? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, things are dangerous. Yummy, yummy. A few more minutes on those. Wow. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That looks so good. It's dark, can't really see. Mmm. Are you just throwing them in the water? Yeah. Any idea how much these would cost at a restaurant? I know. It's like a hundred dollars of oysters right here. I must say, I took some. I took some ideas from our friends Matt and Laura who were here. They had some good ideas on that sauce. Well, we ate all the oysters while we were waiting for the rest of the stuff to cook, but we got some delicious corn on the cob and some sweet peppers to finish dinner off. Sweet peppers are currently our favorite vegetable. <laughs> yeah, if we, our friend Jeremy turned us on to these on the grill. If you guys never tried these, just a big bowl. Some of these little sweet peppers, look, this is what they look like. Just in a bowl, mix them up with some olive oil, garlic, salt, and pepper, and then just throw them on the grill on like low and just, oh, so good. Well, we really hope you guys enjoyed coming with us today. Headed north from Vancouver, got to this sweet little spot. Where are we? Harding Island or something? Basically getting up into Desolation Sound, so it only gets better from here, supposedly. We've never been up there, but we're super excited to explore and check out what it all has to offer. Have some more seafood, some more shellfish, hopefully some crabs or prawns. See some waterfalls and just some spectacular scenery. 
Thank you, as always, and any other? Sure beats the boatyard. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Next time, we see our first BC waterfall from the boat. Cool. We go for a little hike to a freshwater lake. I do a little rock climbing in flip-flops. You're making me a little angry. And I upset Sierra. See you next time.